Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're going to be making a pin without a lathe. Ooh, this should be interesting. Let's dive in. These are all pin blanks that were sent to me by a good friend. He makes a bunch of pins and we made some a while ago for charity. Uh, very, very cool. He does an amazing job and he had a bunch of extra random blanks and so he decided to send them to me and I thought this would be a really good chance to show a couple different methods of making a pin without a lathe. It's a really simple process, uh, just uh, takes a little bit more time. So we're going to use the excess that he has and dive into that. Now these already have the tube inserted in them and glued into them so if you want to see that there are hundreds of videos on how to do that. Today we're just going to look at the actual making of the barrel and how do we shape it. One of the fun things for me with pin kits is trying something new and I've done a whole lot of videos on making pins and I, I rather enjoy them because there are a thousand different ways to do it and if you do it the same way every time it can get a little bit boring. So every time I do one, I try and do something a little bit different. Today we're going to try two different formats. One, I want to do a standard slim line with really, really thin, thin filaments. I'm going to be doing it with a couple of the, uh, the different types of wood. I think this one is walnut, and I think the other one is a sycamore. I'm not 100% sure though. And th then I want to do one with some hickory and actually turn that into an octagonal pin, which is one of my favorites to do. Uh, it's one of those crazy things that's hard to get perfect, uh, but uh, you can keep trying at it. Today we're going to start with this in a vise, in a vise, and this will allow me to bring it up closer to my eye and, and get close with it. I'm going to start with a very, very coarse rasp and go to town on this. This is a great thing to use a 4-in-1 because you can use the rasp on one side and then flip it around for the file, which I'm using here, uh, and then get it close to round. I'm staying as far away from it as I can, but still being close enough that I don't have to do too much work with it. And like normal, we're just going to go from really coarse to kind of coarse to fine to really fine. And, and here I'm using the, the moderately fine. I have it on a, uh, a steel rod that we can run it on and get it close to where I want it to be. I'm regularly going to be looking at the end, and making sure it actually looks round. Um, if it looks round, it's usually round enough, kind of like being square. If it looks square, it is square. And at this point, I'm just I'm, I'm making it feel right, making it look right, and getting rid of the, the small imperfections. Then I'm going to take it over to some sandpaper, not to finish it, but the sandpaper is a really good way of showing where the imperfections are. And I can come back in with a really fine file and roll it. And so one hand is rolling and the file is rolling, and I can get it down to the shape that I want. And there is the, the finished piece. So now we're going to start working on the other piece, which I think is sycamore, though I could be very wrong. And we're going to do the same thing all over again, because you need two pieces for a slimline pin kit. Um, seems a little bit boring, but each of these took me eh, about 10-15 minutes, um, each piece from there to there, and uh, ready to be assembled. Again, hit it with the sandpaper, you can see all the imperfections, and then you can play with it. So there's the two halves. Now I want to try something with an octagonal shape. And for that, we need a piece in a jaw. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to have my first reference side, and I want to flatten that down and get it down to the same dimension away from the center hole. And so I'm going to plane it to down to where I think it's about right, and then I can measure from the hole up, and then check both sides. And if both sides are the same measurement, then I know it's even from one side to the other. If not, then I can come back and plane it. And then we're going to flip it over, and I'm going to plane a parallel side on the opposite side. I want to make sure that those are parallel, and so I will measure from the tube, uh, as well as measuring from the whole thickness of the block on either side of it, and that will let me know if it is indeed uh, parallel and flat. And I want to get all those measurements about the same. Once I have that, then I can rotate it 90 degrees, and I can plane off the other two sides and bring those down into uh, parallel and flat. Uh, find working in the vise is very, very useful um, as long as the board stays where you want it to and not moving around. The other two sides go um, a little bit uh, faster because you're taking off more material. Even though you're taking off the same amount of shavings, um, nope, they just what? seem to go faster for some reason. I want to keep going and making sure all of our measurements are the same. In this case, I'm taking it down to about 0.1 inch um, away from the inside of the tube. So all eight faces are that way. Once I have it square, then I'm going to put it in the vise and I want to make sure it's exactly level. Um, it's at 45 degrees and then I'm just going to plane it off. These go really fast. It's really only um, a, a dozen or so shavings to get it down um, to about 0.1 on either end. Make sure that it's even on both ends, and then rotate it 180 to the other side, and then rotate it again 90 degrees, and then 180 for the last side. And it's that easy to get an octagon. You don't need to draw any lines. Um, just make sure that they are all the same distance away from the inside of the tube, and you have an octagon. It's really easy. 
The last thing we need to do is taper the ends so that they match with the little round ferrule that needs to go into it. Uh, that way there isn't a, a harsh edge coming down. And so I'm going to use a file and check it, and I'll put the ferrule on there and just see, yeah, I need to take off a little bit more on this one, a little bit more on that one, and uh, go to it until it gets a nice clean transition to that um, metal piece. And this is where you want to take your time and do it right because you feel those edges, and if those edges aren't perfect, um, then it's just not going to feel quite right in your hand but a uh, really good octagonal transition from the octagon shape to the round of the ferrule is an incredibly pleasing uh, fit, and it's, it's very, very enjoyable. After that, uh, it's basically ready for finish. And for that, of course, well, this is our shop. We're going to use boiled and pseudo oil and paste wax. Um, it's not the, the shiny high gloss you're going to get with that you expect with a regular pin, uh, but I really like it because it's going to be in my hand. It's something I'm going to be feeling, and I want to feel the wood grain on it. So I'm going to let it soak up as much boiled linseed oil as it wants, let that set aside, whip off the excess, and then apply a little bit of paste wax and polish that down in. It doesn't give you that glossy surface. It's a very matte finish that feels good in the hand, and that, that's what I like. Um, every now and then I like to do a polished finish, but this is that's what I like. It just... Uh, yeah, it makes me happy. In this case, I, I put the, the, the first barrel on, um, only to find out that some of these barrels were slightly different lengths, um, and I didn't think to check that to begin with. Uh, and this one was a bit too short, um, so I had to switch that out for the other one, which was the right length. But unfortunately, pounding them off the barrel once they're on is fairly tricky. Um, so I used a steel rod to push it up from the other side and found the easiest way is to actually tap it out, um, put it in the vise without crushing it, and, uh, and tap it out. Um, and then we can put it back together with the other one in first, and this will give us our, our nicest fit so that the, uh, the pin actually sticks out the appropriate amount so it's not uh, sticking out too far. And we can test it and make sure, yes, it actually retracts all the way inside now. Then we can put on the other barrel and then the cap and clip that go on to the back, and the pin is done, ready to give away as a gift or have a little bit of uh, fun for yourself. Then we're going to do the other one. Um, second first, same as the first. Ought to get better, but yeah, it actually does get better because you, you have a little more skill you've learned from the first one. <laughs> Check it before you put it together. Uh, and then we squeeze it all together, and we have an octagonal pin. And I really like these octagonal ones. They feel good in the hand. You, the, the grip is just, it's nice, and you're not going to get that from a standard turned pin. Really like how these two came out with it. I'm going to experiment with a couple others that he sent. And yeah, I, I really like this. Pin kits. Yay! So there you have it, the pin kit. Uh, this is one of those projects that is incredibly fast, especially if you have a lathe, you can whip one of these out in about five minutes from start to finish. And they are a great gift. So they're one of those things that you, you're thinking about, oh, I gotta go get a gift for the party I'm going to. Well, there you go, a pin kit. They're really, really simple. And you don't need a lathe. It takes longer without the lathe. And there are lots of other designs and I have, I think it's like five or six videos on how to make a pin without a lathe. You can even do some carving into it and do some things that you could never do in a lathe, such as the octagonal. Uh, there are lots of different shapes and styles and it's a really cool gift that you can specialize and make something specific for the person you're doing it without putting a whole lot of time into it but it still means a lot to get. And they come in all different shapes and styles and colors and different types. I, I absolutely love the slim lines. Um, I'll leave a link to uh, a similar kit to this down below. These were actually uh, pre-assembled for me by Aaron. He is a friend of the channel and uh, he made up a bunch of these a while ago that we auctioned off for the Purple Heart Project. And uh, he has done some amazing things in the past. So I'm probably gonna be sending these ones back to him to say thank you. Um, you've done so much for the channel and that means a lot. If you do want to do something for the channel, you can hit like, comment, share, subscribe, put your thoughts down below. Anytime you do put a comment down below, it does help us out. So thank you. Um, I love reading through the comments. I read through all of them and I answer as many as I can get to. So if you want to do that, um, well, you know how the comments work, as well as hitting the like, share, subscribe. You may notice there's another button down there called join. That's actually a membership here on YouTube. I have special perks for that, as well as everyone scrolling over the side. They are the patrons on Patreon. Uh, without patrons and members here on the channel, uh, we, we, wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't be here. Uh, we're completely sponsored by you, the viewers. So thank you for that. If you'd like to find out more about that, there's links to Patreon down below. Click the little join button. You know how all that works. I think they'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. The reason I made two is that the pin is mightier than the sword, and I really wish to have a battle. Ha 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 ha!